Hi guys, my name is Julia, welcome to Book Time. Today I'm going to be doing my TBR for short stories for the end of the year. So I do really love short story collections, but I just for some reason don't pick them up as much as I do novels. So I've got uh, eight or nine short story collections here that I own that I'd like to get through hopefully by the end of the year. I mean, I probably won't. My aim would be to read at least four of them. So at least one per month for the end, to, uh, at least one per month until the end of the year. And if I get through more, that's great. But I've picked a whole selection so that um, I don't feel too restricted when I have to choose. I can like pick whichever one I feel like. So I think five of them are Australian and the other four are American. That wasn't intentional. That's just kind of how it worked out. So I'm just going to go through them in no particular order. The first one is Margot Lanigan, Singing My Sister Down. I just bought this last month. It's a new collection of hers that's just come out. I think actually only three of the stories are new and the others have appeared in um, early collections or have been published in magazines or anthologies. She's one of my favorite Australian writers. She's so good. She's really um, writes really interesting speculative slash fantasy fiction, but not high fantasy, more like she's really interested in mythology and folklore and weaving that into stories, particularly about women. She writes really interesting stories um, that can be read sort of in a feminist way. Um, I'm just going to read out the back of this because it sounds awesome. Um, a bride accepts her devastating punishment. A piece of the moon is buried. A ferryman falls into the sticks. Wee Willy Winky brings a waking nightmare. A new father dresses a fallen warrior princess. A sniper picks off clowns one by one. Margot Lanigan's stories will stay with you, haunting you with their quiet beauty and fine balance. Um, and yeah, I love her. So I'm really, really excited to get into this. The next one um, has also appeared on my channel before. It's Pulse Points by Jennifer Down. I talked about this in my readings haul um, video, which was about the readings prize for new Australian fiction for which this has been shortlisted. This is a set of realist stories that are kind of, I, I think they're going to be like little snapshots and impressions of people in different places in life. Her first novel called Our Magic Hour, I really liked. So I'm pretty excited to get into this one and I can't get over the cover. It's amazing. Um, yeah, hoping to get into this soon. The next one is um, an anthology from last year called Award Winning Australian Fiction. And I am actually in this one. One of my short stories won a competition that year. So for a, another magazine called Overland, but um, it got published in this anthology too. And I've been meaning to get around to reading um, the whole book because obviously I want to read all the other, um, not entries, but the other stories and poems that won other competitions throughout Australia that year. This is a really interesting um, collection because it's stories that won competitions during 2017, but it's a whole range of different types of competitions. So some are massive competitions like Australia wide, really well known. Others are you know, some tiny pri local council prize somewhere in Australia. So it's really broad. There's children's prizes, um, winning entries from children's prizes in here, um, short stories, poetry, nonfiction, essays. So I think it'll be really interesting and really varied and it'll be great to get a snapshot of a whole lot of different Australian writing um, from that year. The next one is another anthology of different writers called Australian Love Stories. It's got a really pretty cover, might be a bit hard to see. I bought this when it came out in, I think it was 2014, edited by Kate Kennedy, who is a very beloved Australian author. She writes a lot of short stories herself. Um, and I bought this because my good friend, Alexis Drevakoski, one of her, um, memoir pieces got published in this which is awesome um or maybe it's fiction I'm not sure in any case it's really great and I've read her entry and a couple of others but I haven't read the whole collection um when it says love stories it doesn't really mean romance there is some romance but um as it says on the back within these pages lie imaginary lovers unattainable lovers star-crossed lovers and predestined lovers there is straight love same-sex love and some very curious love all the while, love's attendance, cupid, lust, obsession and betrayal dance through this volume. 
etc. So I think it's going to be a really great range of stories and Alexis's story um, and the other couple that I've read so far were really good but very different in focus so I'm excited to get into this. The next one um, is Letter to George Clooney by Deborah Adelaide. This was long listed for the Stella Prize which is the Australian, um, it's a prize for women's fiction. Uh, not women's fiction, for any women's writing, actually. Um, it can be memoir, non-fiction, fiction, short stories. This was longlisted in 2014, which was the inaugural year. And I think I picked this up at the uni bookstore and just haven't got around to reading it. Um, the impression I get is that it's a set of realist stories. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. It was really well reviewed at the time when it came out. So now we move on to my four American short stories. I read a lot of American fiction because that's what I research. Um, the first one is Blasphemy by Sherman Alexi. Again, awesome cover. Like, it's just so good. So this first came out in America in 2012 by Grove Press. It was republi re republished here by Scribe. Um, he's, yep, an American writer writes a lot of stories that are set in the American West, which is why I picked him up in the first place because um, the novels that I write about for my PhD, half of them are set in the American West. So I like to read a lot of other contemporary fiction also set there. So I have a good idea of the context. And I've read the first two stories in here and they were awesome. Sherman Alexi is a spoken Cordeline man. So he, um, sorry, Spokane, I think that's how you say it. Um, so he's a Native American and that's the tribe and nation that he's from. And so a lot of these stories, potentially all of them have um, Native American protagonists and are about all sorts of things. The one, I think the first one I read was about drugs and young people, but that sounds kind of depressing. It was actually very funny and warm. It, obviously it was very serious and distressing, um, some elements of it, but it also had a sort of funny... A, yeah this humorous undertone which made for really interesting reading so I'm really looking forward to getting into the rest of the collection for that one the next one probably well I guess a lot of people have probably read this it's Raymond Carver's first published collection will you please be quiet please that came, first came out in 1976 um, and he's very well known for his minimalist sort of Bare and Sparse Prose, which I'm very interested to get into. And I've read the first two stories in this book a lot of times because I really love them, particularly the second one, which is called Neighbours. And it's just about these two, um, a couple, and their neighbours across the hallway go on a holiday and the a couple that stays behind go over to water their plants, but they end up spending more and more time in this flat. It gets kind of weird and it seems to be about... Um, aspiration and then to be honest I don't really know what it's about I just know that I love reading it and I love the weird unsettling feeling that it gives me so I'm really looking forward to reading the rest of them because um, if they're anywhere as good as the first two then this will just be a great collection the next one is Trilobites and Other Stories by Brees DJ Pancake which is potentially the greatest author's name ever it was also his actual name I think the DJ bit was a nickname but um, Bruce Pancake was his actual name which is pretty cool but sadly he um, this was actually published as a collection posthumously so he committed suicide in 1979 he was only 26 years old and a bunch of I think some of the stories in here had already been published in um, journals and magazines but this collection wasn't printed until after he died I've been meaning to read it for a long time because he was from West Virginia and I get the impression that a number of these stories are set in West Virginia as well. And again, I sound like a broken record because a lot of the books I research are set in the South as well as the American West. I try to read a lot of stories about people set in the South, particularly working class people, um, which is what this is about. So I'm really looking forward to get into this, though I imagine, and from what I've read, it might be quite sad and upsetting um, because a lot of people have said and it's hard to know how much of this is true or just something people say but a lot of people have said that um, as you read his stories you can sort of see the indications that he wasn't in a good space so I'm guessing that a number of these stories will be upsetting and the cover kind of gives that impression too so there's that one 
The last one I've literally had for 10 years. This is not even the book. Like I have books on my TBR that I've had for longer than that that I still haven't read. But um, this is Joyce Carol Oates, The Museum of Dr. Moses. And I really have, want to read more Joyce Carol Oates because I think she's a good writer. I think I've only read one of her books, which was called Black, White or Black and White. Um, but she writes a lot of sort of gothic infused fiction. Yep, I bought this when it came out. Been meaning to read it ever since. The first story is called Suicide Watch, in which a missing... A misabitious businessman desperate to find his missing two-year-old grandson must determine whether the horrifying tale his junkie son tells him is a confession or a sick tea. So that sounds fun. Um, and the other one is about the children of a convicted serial killer. Well, not the other one, but one of the other ones. So again, another really uplifting book, but I do like these ones that are really weird and violent for some reason. So anyway... Hopefully I'll get to this soon. It would be really awesome if I got to all of these by the end of the year, but I probably won't. Um, but yeah, if I get to at least half of these, I'll be pretty stoked. I, especially the Margot Lanigan and the Jennifer Down, I really desperately want to read. And also uh, the Sherman Alexi. Well, actually, I'm really, really pumped about all of them, actually. So yeah, we'll see. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.